Hey, how's it going? This is Gazelic for Grinderschool.com. Here today with episode 8 of my How to Master MTTs series. Uh, today we're going to focus on bubble play. I'm going to talk about how to play uh, different stack sizes from uh, a small stack through to a big stack. I'm going to talk about common mistakes and misconceptions and then go through some profitable situations. Now I've decided to uh, include an example here um, of the top 7 uh, payouts uh, compared to the bottom 7 payouts. Now as you can see this is a $5.50 1000 cap tournament, it actually only had 876 runners. Um, it's on PokerStars. Now as you can see, um, so a min cash in this tournament is $8.76 which is 0.2% of the total prize pool. Um, so if you make the money, if you decide to um, uh, play just to just to min cash, then you're going to make a massive three dollars and twenty six cents. Now, if we compare that, so 02 percent to the amount uh, awarded to first place, which is eighteen percent, we can see that it's uh, a lot, lot more. Um, you know, just just under a hundred times more, so 90, 90 times bigger. Uh, the reason why I've decided to put these two graphics up there is to show you um, and try and uh, persuade you that we should be uh, making, uh, doing everything possible uh, to shoot for the shoot for the final table. Now there are exceptions to this, um, and we'll go through some of those in a minute. Uh, but what I'm suggesting um, today is that we continue to play our regular game, even though it's the bubble. Um, but there are certain things that we need to look out for uh, in terms of uh, how the other players are playing and then look to um, exploit them. So just to kind of go through that again, um, there are certain times when, um, you know, making $3.26 um, makes sense, um, but it's very a very small percentage of the time. Uh, so most of the time we should be uh, making aggressive moves um, to pick up a lot of chips um, at this stage of the tournament as um, to take us through, hopefully, to the final table. So, um, first of all then, um, this is Short Stack Play Part 1. This is one, one way of thinking, is to not care too much about bubbling. Um, so, we're not really bothered about the, uh, the $2.36 um, profit, or whatever it was from the, from the last slide. Um, what we're looking to do is to take lots of plus chip EV spots. So what we should be doing is finding players who do care about bubbling and attack their blinds. Uh, so looking to steal at every opportunity. Um, now what you'll find is if you find the, uh, these players are tightening up, then you can shove a much wider range. And I've included that in the third point. You can widen your shoving range as your opponents tighten theirs. Now the middle point here, um, I said continue to look for plus chip EV spots, um, mainly with a, a short stack. If we're thinking about uh, less than 15 big blinds, we should be looking to um, shove at every, every opportunity. Um, I've included um, restealing in the, in the next slide when we talk more about average stack, although it's kind of in between um, sort of the short stack and the average stack when we get on to thinking about 16 to 22 big blinds. Um, but we'll talk about that um, further on in a moment. So um, let's just quickly look at an example then. Uh, the example is the Ace-2 offsuit uh, where I can um, show you a plus chip EV spot um, in Sit and Go Wizard. Okay, so here's the hand in Sit and Go Wizard. Um, what we've got to make sure we do um, with uh, Sit and Go Wizard is to change this mode to chip equity mode. Um, so, what like I said, we're looking for plus chip EV spots at the moment rather than plus dollar EV spots. Um, really, um, dollar EV will come into into play um, as we approach the final table and definitely at the final tables. But until we until we get there, um, I prefer to treat um, the bubble just as a, a similar part of the tournament as the middle stages um, and keep it at that and keep playing my my regular game. But looking to exploit my opponents and pick up uh, chips wherever possible. So as you can see, um, Zingo Wizard is suggesting that if the small blind is going to call with 6.7% um, and the big blind is going to call with 10%, uh, which as you can see is 5 plus ace 10 plus ace 8 suited, um, then we should be shoving 100% of hands in this in this spot. Um, let's just change this to push. Okay. Um, now, 
this might seem might seem um, kind of strange to think that we could actually shove you know three two offsuit seven two offsuit everything like that. Um, I can just show you that there will be a difference um, in terms of um, the this this uh, number here uh, between the uh, equity of pushing and the equity of folding. Okay. Um, now at the moment the edge is set to be really really small. Um, this is like not even half a small blind. Now if you were going to think, okay, well in this particular spot when it's close to the, the bubble, I over time I want to make a big blind. You can change this number to, to 2500. Um, and you'll notice that it's still saying that 100% of hands should be should be shoved in this spot. If you wanted to take, you know, take this to extreme, you want to think, okay, well I want two big blinds at this, uh, at this moment. Um, then you can put that in. And it's then suggesting that our range should be nines plus and ace to queen plus. Now, I mean this to to expect uh, two big blinds uh, difference uh, in this spot, uh, I think is uh, is unrealistic. Um, so we sh we should be probably thinking um, somewhere, I guess between a small blind and a big blind. Um, but you you will have to kind of play around with this if you get if you've got sit and go wizard. Um, but even, I mean, even if we uh, we change this to seven two off suit, okay. Um, I mean, it's still saying push because it's suggesting that we shove a hundred percent of hands. Uh, but it's still going to uh, with seven two off suit. Still, the difference between uh, pushing and folding is still over a big blind, um, which is absolutely is absolutely huge. Um, so another thing to consider is our the effect of our stack on the bubble on the stacks behind us now i would much sooner be the the person shoving in my chips in rather than calling um calling off in this spot so you might even think that the players behind you will call with an even tighter range okay so i've changed the small blind to 5.4 percent just nines and ace queen okay and the big blind to six plus ace jack ace ten suited okay um which will have an effect on the uh, the difference between uh, pushing and folding. Um, so let's just change out this hand back to what it was. Ace two off suit. Okay. Uh, so we've got in like one and a half big blinds now, which is which is really really good. Uh, so that's something to to consider is that on the um, on the bubble with pl uh, tight players behind us, we can shove a really really uh, wide range. Let's go back to here. Um, uh, let's move on to the next bit. Uh, short stack play part two. Um, a min cash. This is uh, just a point to, to consider. A min cash is the biggest pay jump for quite a while. So if we, um, I can just quickly go back to the original slide. Um, 118th place then in this tournament would get nothing, and 117th place would get eight dollars seventy six. Um, so that's, you know, you won't find. Um, a pay jump um, bigger than eight dollars seventy six until you get closer to the final table. Now, if you look even at the final table, the difference between seventh and sixth is only uh, about forty three dollars. Okay, uh, which means that uh, away from the final table, these the the difference in in pay jumps is going to be uh, even smaller. So it's, it is something to consider. It wouldn't probably wouldn't uh, make me change uh, the way that I played on the bubble too much. Um, Consider the difference between um, busting out on the bubble and um, picking up eight dollars seventy six more, uh, because the the main reason why we play aggressive on the bubble is to try and um, abuse other players and make sure that we can build up a stack that helps us move forward to the final table. Um, but I put here sometimes it can be right to fold if your chances of winning the tournament are low. For example, you've taken a big hit just before the bubble. So if you've got just a few big blinds, three, four, five big blinds um, on the direct bubble, it can be right to fold in, in what you might perceive as plus chip EV spots um, in the hope of just making that $8.76 $8 uh, difference. Okay, um, so let me just show you this, this example. Um, so here, um, the small blinds with about 20 bigs, sorry, 10 bigs, decides to shovel in. Now, he, we would imagine that his range is going to be fairly wide in this spot. Um, and we only have uh, three, three and a bit big blinds in this particular spot. Now, 
I would I would guess that Ace 10 suited in this particular spot is well ahead of uh, the small blind shoving range. But in this particular instance, um, you have to think about whether or not the times that you win in this in this spot and and um, th then go you know go on to 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 uh, make a deeper run in the tournament well that way the times that actually uh, you lose in this spot and actually go home with nothing um, you know ending up in that 118th place just outside the money um, this is a sort of um, interesting interesting scenario um, let me just try and bring in poker stove okay so we can see from um, here that um, Universal Replay is suggesting that uh, we need 43.3%. This isn't actually um, correct. And if you've been working um, using Universal Replay's function like this, you need to be really careful um, about this. I actually did the calculations earlier and worked out that we needed 29.7% equity. Uh, so anything better than that is going to be a uh, plus chip EV. Um, now we can go into uh, into Poker Stove. We can give ourselves a range of Ace 10 suited. Um, and we can find out that um, you know even if there are, um, the small blinds shoving 10%, we're getting the right equity to call. Um, and if they're shoving 5%, we're still getting the right equity to call. You know even if they're shoving ridiculously tight for this scenario, uh, we're getting the right odds to to call in this particular spot. Now what I'm saying um, is that on the direct bubble when um, you know there's a chance that you can fold it out and wait for someone else to bust it might be a better option to um, fold and just sort of coast into the money so this final point on short stacking uh, one final thought do you have to shove with less than 15 big blinds um, the example there we're going to use the same example of ace two off suit um, what this means is that on the on the bubble if you just, uh, decide to make the shove with ace two or suit, you're only likely to be called with hands that completely dominate um, your hand. You know, better aces and uh, and pocket pairs. Now, if we go back to sit and go wizard and look at this hand, um, this I mean, this was with the tight range that we thought that the um, big blind would call with sixes, ace jack, ace ten suited. Um, but let's let's say for example that they they wouldn't. Um, let, let, sorry, let's just uh, let's go back to that. Let's say, for example, that these these are exactly the same hands that if you decided to min raise in this particular spot, that they would three bet shove all in on the bubble uh, to try and put pressure on you. Then we're st we're still making exactly the same number of chips because we're um, it's essentially essentially the same. They're still folding um, a ridiculous part of their range, but the times when we shove in this particular spot and get called by a hand that completely dominates us and we get eliminated at the tournament will be um you know will be saved so it's just something else to to consider um let me just find it here so here it is so we've got um 12 big blinds um and so what i'm suggesting in this particular spot is that these two players are going to play a similar range um to three bet shove against you and to actually call call your shove in this spot um so the idea is to just min raise which looks particularly um strong okay so just over min raise to these two players okay and they might fold hands like ace nine ace eight ace seven ace six possibly uh hands that we um are completely dominated by so that's just something something to consider especially on the bubble and um, we talk about it closer to the final table as well that you can still, I know it kind of goes against what a lot of people will think, that it, but you can still sort of min-raise with a 12 big blind stack. If someone decides to shove, we've still got uh, just under 10 bigs um, to try and uh, put pressure on by, by shoving all in. But um, just because someone says that you you know, you know can't min-raise, you shouldn't be raised folding with a um, you know less than 16 big blind stack or 14 big blind stack, doesn't mean that you, shouldn't always, uh, that you should always listen to them. Um, and sometimes in poker you need to be a bit creative and think um, a little bit about what will happen in this particular situation. So what I'm saying here is that if you shove in this spot, you're only, only going to get called by hands that completely dominate you and you're likely then to be out of the tournament. Um, of course, the chances that they both fold are, are pretty uh, 
are pretty large uh, because they're only calling with a really tight range, but they're going to be doing exactly the same, uh, getting it in with you with a similar range. So uh, when we when we just min raise. So average stack play, um, I put there at the top, steal, 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 and that should be the main um, main idea on the bubble. Um, I've also put here, look to three bet re-steal versus habitual stealers. This should have really been, I guess, um, moving on to sort of short stack play part three, uh, but I've included it here. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be uh, three bet re-stealing all in though. Um, we can three bet um, and put pressure on other players, especially players uh, with smaller stacks uh, than ours and with similar size stacks to ours. Um, uh, to put pressure on them to make a four bet on the bubble, um, either for their tournament life or for the majority of their of their stack. Um, some players will be opening liberal, uh, liberally enough to make it very profitable to be three bet re-stealing, um, whether you're doing that with a 16 to 22 big blind stack all in, um, or you're doing it with um, a bigger stack than that, with an average size stack, 30, 35 big blinds, um, looking to put pressure on, on other similar size stacks. Um, I've put there, watch out for re-stealing versus a non-steal. Um, I've got an example here, uh, Ace Ten suited. Um, okay, um, so the button decides to to open here, and this is a, generally in, in tournament poker. I would be looking to get this, uh, get uh, three bet this all in um, at the earliest opportunity. The thing to consider here, um, and especially on the bubble, is whether or not this particular player um, has been stealing a lot. Now, if this is the first time that they've opened from the button, uh, you you would still uh, think that their range was, was particularly wide, um, but he is raising into a 20 and a 35 big blind stack um, with only kind of less than 35 bigs himself. Um, so you, the chances of him looking to raise call um, might be slightly, slightly larger. So it's really important when we do look to um, three bet re-steal especially on the bubble uh, but but in other in other uh, situations as well is that we um we know that we can be confident this player is actually stealing you know if this player is running 11 6 or 8 4 uh even at this stage of the tournament which would be crazy um then we have to think about whether or not we can actually profitably shove uh, with ace 10 suited and i'll just uh, to to sort of reiterate this point i'm just going to bring it into um sit and go wizard for you to have a look at Right, so here's the hand in uh, Sit and Go Wizard. Um, I've just put in the the average um, model at the moment. Uh, so the player raises to 4,500. Um, if we look at this, um, the edge function again, uh, this is just about a small blind, just under a small blind. Um, if we wanted to think to ourselves, okay, well we want to be uh, picking up a big blind, um, which is quite big in this in this uh, situation, uh, but then we can change it. And this is suggesting we shove with eights and ace queen. Now, if we go over to um, look at the range of hands that this player is opening, thirteen percent. Okay, um, you can see it on the on the board, uh, sorry, on the screen there. Um, and then he's going to call with sixes, ace jack, and ace ten suited. Um, you can see that we're not getting uh, him to fold a huge part of his range, we, which we would do if we uh, if he was opening a lot. Um, I mean, if we went that he was even tighter than that, uh, we're then looking at nines, ace king, and ace queen suited to be shoving in this particular in this particular spot. Now, if we uh, went back to the original, it was about that. Um, still, a, a similar range of hands. Uh, in fact, probably exactly the same uh, of hands that we should be three three betting there. Um, if we think that he's is very loose, then ace ten suited is going to be a shove uh, because we get him to fold. Um, seven twentieths uh, which is 35 percent of his range um straight away and we're still actually ahead of uh, quite a lot of these hands these weaker races um the king x king x hands as well so um that's the the point here is that if he's not stealing um be careful about um re-stealing uh, with a re-steal re-steal stack um if you can be confident that let's say that this guy is opening with 35 percent of hands um, which you'll find a lot of people, I mean, they're possibly opening a much, much wider range than this. Um, and then let's say that he's he's only calling um, with this range of hands. I mean, this is, this is um, says kind of says it all. 
um, you know, that if with Ace-10 suited, our difference would be um, two and a, just over two and a half um, big blinds. And it's actually saying that we should shove 100% of, of hands here. Um, if we go back to uh, thinking, okay, well, I want a big blind edge here, then we can still shove 96.4% of hands in this particular spot. And this is the reason for this um, is the difference between um, the hands that this player is opening and the hands that he's prepared to, to call uh, your shove with. Okay, so that's uh, just an example, really, of if a player is opening tight and he's not really stealing, but he's you know he's raising for value, um, he's looking to to call uh, your shove, especially on the bubble. Then we need to tighten up our range for three bet restealing. Um, if they're particularly loose um, and then only calling with a certain percentage of hands, then we can shove a really really wide range. Um, this is something to consider. Uh, um, many parts of the tournament with a kind of 16 to 22 big blind stack um, but it's something a concept really important I think to consider when we are on the bubble okay so uh, this final point are three bet players who can't afford to take a hit um, so putting pressure on other players so it's really we're looking uh, to continue our work um, that, we, that we covered in, in earlier episodes of this series and uh, putting pressure on other players to make mistakes, um, whether they decide to three bet too much out of position or they uh, end up sh uh, four bet shoving a wider range. Um, you know, and th at that point we uh, need to think about adjusting. Um, but what you'll find is that um, sometimes a big stack may fi uh, four bet wider, um, especially on the bubble, to try and put uh, pressure. Um, now this this particular player, if you've noticed that he's four betting wide and really is putting pressure on, they can sometimes be a good target to three bet and to actually go with the hand. Um, don't forget that what we're trying to do at this um, this point of the tournament um, is to look for plus chip EV spots. If you are finding it really easy to um, pick up blinds with just straight steals or you're um, finding it easy to three bet um, re-steal, then continue continue with that play. If you are finding it a little bit more difficult and you feel that there's um, a player who is abusing the fact that he has a big stack and he's abusing the bubble, then you may have to um, take um, spots similar to the one I'm about to discuss where they decide to 4-bet wider um, and you therefore have to widen your range for calling that 4-bet. So let's just have a quick look at this example. Okay, so here we are with about 31, 32 bigs. Um, and this particular player has been um, raising a ton of hands and also uh, putting pressure on uh, with based on the stacks stacks behind. Not, um, he's not afraid to, to get, the, get the chips in in this particular spot. Um, as you can see, um, there's some short stacks at this table, sort of five big blinds and just under 10 big blinds. Now this um, season, it's not the final table. Um, and there are there will be several other tables at this particular point, but just to consider the fact that there's one player uh, with five bigs and one player with ten bigs, uh, just on this table, you can imagine that there are other shorter stacks um, at, at, in the uh, tournament at the moment, and therefore uh, you can imagine that this player uh, is going to be putting pressure on sort of medium-sized stacks if he if he can do at any point. Um, so in this particular spot, this guy's been opening um, a lot. And I decided to to three bet. I'm three betting for value here because I I think I'm I'm well ahead of his range, um, and I actually think as well that I'm I'm going to be well ahead of his four bet range. If I thought for for a second that this uh, player would open a lot of pots, um, but sort of uh, fold to a lot of uh, resistance, and then four bet just really strong hands, things like um, Ace King plus and tens plus, say. Um, then you know sometimes three bedding ace queen here might be might be okay because it kind of uh, makes it easy for us to sort of range our opponent um because their four bet range will be be that that much tighter and if we do decide to flatten this particular spot we might get in trouble on on uh, on sort of eight high flops queen high flops um you know, but by three betting this particular spot, we can narrow down his range. Sometimes it might be better um, to just flatten certain certain spots and keep in a lot of the hands that we um, dominate, like king queen, queen jack, um, ace jack, ace ten, um, queen ten, things like that, where 
it's going to be um, easier to to, to play um, post flop. Uh, but in this particular spot, I decided to three bet because I was confident that even if this player decided to four bet, um, I would be well well ahead of his his range. And he does actually decide to to four bet. Um, and in this particular spot, I decided to to, to go with my hand. Um, now, it's really important at this stage. I think, um, I mean, this is, show, again, showing that we need 43.3% equity. Uh, what I'm going to do is just pause the video quickly and do the maths on this. But the reason why this is saying 43.3% and I'm not convinced it's right is the fact that this player has a bigger stack than ours uh, or than us. Um, so let me just uh, do the maths quickly on this and pause the video and I'll be right back. Right, okay, so here's the, the maths. Um, we have to kind of consider that... Um, the, this player is shoving 126,091 chips, which is our stack before we make the three bet. Um, we can then add that to the um, size of the pot uh, before he decides to, to shove. Um, and then we can uh, take away the, the uh, sorry, divide that by the uh, number of chips it takes to call. Um, what I'm going to do, I think I've just spotted a mistake, so I'm going to pause it again and we'll come back. Okay, I think I've got it right this time. Uh, the problem I'm at was I put in these extra 9,500 chips. Um, but what we can do then is we can add up the, uh, the size of our three bet, uh, the size of the small blind, the big blind, and the pot in the middle. Uh, then we can add that to the, the size of our stack, which this player is shoving, and then divide it by the number of chips it takes for us to call. And that um, gives us an answer of 1.4655. Uh, and for those of you who don't know what that is as a percentage, um, you just add one to this number and then um, use that number and have one divided by this number. So what we're going to do is do one divided by 2.4655. Uh, okay, and that means that we need 40.559% equity in this particular spot uh, or better um, to make it break even or profitable. Now, if we bring in um, Poker Stove, we can see the kind of um, hands that this player um, might choose to to four bet. Um, okay, uh, let's say that they decide to to four bet and put pressure on with these this range of of hands. Um, we can see that we have fifty one point seven six seven percent equity. Um, now let's bring the calculator in again. So we only need forty percent equity. Um, so, oops. So we can then, um, you know, if we thought this player um, was only going to be four betting a really a really tight range, uh, we can see that we're not getting the required equity, and it would actually uh, be a mistake would be compounded uh, by the fact that we're on the bubble. Um, but if we think that this player is is four betting um, is four betting wider um, with these with this range of hands, even I mean ten point seven percent. Um, we're still doing really, really well against this range. Uh, if we take out the uh, the weaker, sorry, the the kings in the range, uh, we're still getting still getting um, equity. Um, we can take out. Let's just go for Ace Ten Plus. Okay, and um, we're still, you know, we're still uh, well ahead of of what what we need in this particular spot. And so this is goes back to what I said from the start of the video is that we should be looking to continue to take plus chip EV spots. Um, my read on this player uh, and this particular scenario was that this particular player was going to be shoving a much wider range. I mean, you can see here that we're still getting the right equity if this player is shoving a fairly fairly tight range. Um, you know, if we take take out Ace Ten off suit, uh, we're still getting the right uh, equity. And I can imagine this player for betting this this well much much wider than this than this range. But as you can see, even against a tight range like this, um, we're still doing. Uh, well enough to make this make this a call. Okay, so that's um, average stack play um, with a big stack. Then um, this is some suggestions. Um, I think you should open up until your opponents start playing back at you, um, and you should continue playing your regular game. You should be looking to um, steal. You should be looking to re-steal. Um, you should be looking to play pots in position against um, your opponents. You should be looking to defend your blinds if someone um, is uh, stealing a lot. Yeah, you know you don't have to uh, three bet re steal out of position, uh, which makes the you know the game much more difficult. You um, you can if you want to um, flat 
and defend your blind and then keep the pot keep the pot smaller obviously then um you know it's is opponent dependent and their uh, situation dependent and um, we have to think um you know if we decide to three bet resteal then we've taken um the initiative in the pot um whereas with just just flatting um we either need to hit um a part of the flop or be prepared to make some sort of move against our opponent um something to consider here is that for example they might see about a lot of flops but check back a lot of turns um and if they're opening that wider range you, um and their seabet percentage on the flop is is really high um you can expect them to have air uh, quite a lot of the time and something to consider there uh, might be to bluff um check raise in that particular spot but it's always uh, better to be doing that um as a sort of semi bluff where at the equity um where we have pretty decent equity um to improve our hand um so i've also said to create dynamics with other players to get them to make a mistake um and three bet a lot to put your opponent to the test for their tournament life. So what this means is because you have a big stack, um, a bigger stack than your opponent, you can look to um, put pressure on other opponents because if they decide to four bet, um, it will tend to be a four bet all in and will be for their tournament life. And obviously there are players that don't care too much about um, bubbling and they may see your um the fact that you're three betting uh, quite a lot um as an opportunity to, to also um take plus gpv spots because the difference between uh, your three bet range and the your call in a four bet range could be particularly wide um which would make um it profitable for them to shove um, a wider range uh, as a four bet in that particular spot uh, so that is something to consider um but if you're playing against uh, weaker opponents um, then three betting to put pressure on at this stage of the tournament is can be can be really really profitable. Okay, so I've always also put the um, attacking the small stacks blinds and three betting um, average stacks. Um, there's a kind of a caveat to to this this point, and it's the fact that if the, um, you know you decide to to attack um, a sort of a short stacks blinds, um, it's the the short stacks that are looking to coast into the money, um, and I talk about. Um, this in a uh, in a minute, um, but how to how to kind of spot these spot these players, um, but they. What's also important to consider, um, you know, if they're folding, folding um, very large um, large portion of the time, just hoping to to make the money, then we should then we can uh, be looking to steal their blinds at every opportunity. If they, um, though they don't really care about bubbling, they're just looking to get out of the tournament. Um, you know, whether they you know decided that's the last tournament they're going to be playing uh, in their session and they just want to sort of get rid of it um or they just they just um think well you know what's the kind of point in carrying on um then we need to be um to really need to recognize um that we possibly need to raise call um against these players uh and therefore we need to adjust um our uh hand selection um so that we can actually actually make those calls when we do get um such good odds um and the other thing to uh, say is three bet average stacks. Um, once again, to be putting pressure on these stacks, um, putting um, their tournament life on the line, on the bubble. Um, and what you'll find is that you know the, the more aggressive you are, um, the, the the more chips you pick up. Um, and something else to consider as well is that the more aggressive you are, um, eventually players are going to start playing back at you. Uh, and this is where um, you need to, to start adjusting, um, perhaps. Uh, picking on on other players uh, there will be players at your table who um, will be easier to steal from um, and to three bet re-steal and to three bet in position and to play pots in position against um, so we don't always um, have to um, choose more competent players and it might actually be better to choose weaker players in this particular instance okay so some common mistakes and misconceptions then um, I see a lot of uh, students who um, get to the point when they are able to steal a wider range um, on the bubble, uh, but then don't adjust to to re-stealers. Um, so what um, something to think about here is: Do you need to open against players that are perfectly happy in in three bet re-stealing? Um, you know, are there easier players to pick up chips from? Are there easier ways um, to pick up chips at this particular point in the tournament? And the other thing to think about is adjusting uh, the range of hands that you actually call these these shoves with. 
um, you know, if we're always looking to, uh, to make plus GPV um, plays, then there are going to be certain times when we recognize that someone is re-stealing with a, an 18 big blind stack a lot, and therefore their range is going to be um, a lot wider um, for that reason. So therefore we can we can call um, with a wider range as well, as long as we're getting the, the right equity. Now if you've got a big stack, um, let's say we're, we've got 80 big blinds and we're facing an 18 big blind um, reshove, then it doesn't affect um, our tournament uh, chances so much as we, as we move um, as we move forward. Um, but consider another example where we have 21 big blinds and a 25 big blind decides to three bet shove against us. Um, then we're not only are we having to um, call and, and and hope that we you know we've, we're getting the, the right equity. Um, you know, our hand plays plays well against the range of hands their opponent is playing. We also have to think about the um, about busting out of the tournament, and it's much better at um, at this stage of the tournament, and probably um, a lot of the state, lot of um, stages in poker tournaments, to be the person who's putting the other person to the test. And what that means is making it more difficult for your opponent, um, so that they have to call um, the bet, so they're the last person to call. Um, rather than the other way around where you um, might have to make a more marginal call. And the other thing to think there is that by doing that, um, you have um, added fold equity on your side, so um, you don't necessarily have to put them to a difficult spot to um, call, um, but you're putting a lot, of, a lot of pressure on them. Another thing I see is, is actually uh, the opposite of this, is playing too tightly, looking to coast into the money. Um, this happens quite a lot um, in the middle stages where players don't recognize that they can um, steal a lot. They don't recognize the, the opponents at their table um, and how tight they're playing um, and how exploitable they can um, they are. Um, and so they actually play far too tight. Um, you know, they're, they're looking to coast into the money. And I put there, yay, I just made my buy-in back and, and a bit more uh, like we saw earlier. So um, the $5.50 buy-in plus an extra couple of dollars. Um, but now I have no sort of stack to go deep. Now we talked about this. Sometimes it can be all right if you've got a really, really short stack. You've taken a big hit um, close to the bubble. Um, but for the most part, we should be looking to make plus GPV moves. We should be looking to play aggressively to try and build a big stack at this uh, stage of the tournament to move us forward uh, towards the final table. Um, something else I see um, is uh, attacking more competent players. Um, when there can be much easier chips to fight for. Um, if we know that a player is looking to coast into the money, we can steal their blinds um, and put pressure on them. Um, also something is to think about is the, you know, how profitable is shoving um, in a particular spot um, or three bet restealing. If it's a competent uh, player, their ranges are gonna be um, slightly different um, and won't always be um, particularly obvious to us. You know, if it's, we're playing against a weak player and we're, we expected them to three bet or four bet um, for for value every time, um, then, our, you know, we can play pretty pretty well, pretty easily against them so we can call with our strong hands and fold our weak hands. But against more competent players, um, they're going to be uh, playing with a much wider range. We're not um, going to be completely confident. They're going to just be four betting a uh, 4% range, let's say the top 4% of hands. Um, and therefore, we have to, uh, to adjust to them. Now, the the easiest way to, 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 to avoid avoid that is just to, to not have to play against them and to pick on other players instead. Um, but the, as a sort of um, sort of against that is actually giving up against competent players because the big, there could be other chips to pick up. Um, if you're not confident that there are other chips to pick up, um, you know, you've not found it particularly easy to pick up chips at this stage of the tournament or at uh, any stage of the tournament uh, from the middle stages onwards, um, then you know we might have to um, square up against a more competent player. And if you think um, you're able to form reads that a competent player might be three bet restealing um, with a wider range, then we need to um, adjust for that and actually um, open up the uh, range of hands that we decide to four bet um, if it, if the our opponent hasn't decided to to resteal all in um, or, or to call to call their to call their shove. And like I said earlier, it'd be much better to put the pressure on. Um, especially against a competent player, um, by, by forward betting and putting them to the test um, by having to make the, the make the final call. So some profitable situations then, attack the blinds of weaker players. Um, they may choose to 
to call you. Uh, most of the time they'll, they'll fold if, if they're sort of weak tight uh, or their three bet um, re-steal, three bet shove with their very strong hands, um, which makes it really, really easy for us. Um, we should be looking to shove and three bet shove wider. Uh, look to shove against uh, against tighter players behind and three bet shove against someone that's opening a lot of uh, pots um, but he's then only calling with a, a much a much narrower range uh, put there if you can't steal then three bet re-steal instead um, if there are no opportunities for you to steal um, you know the players behind you um, are pretty pretty competent they're not letting you steal um, then it might be more profitable to actually three bet re-steal against um, the players uh, ahead of you um, but they're also 3-bet versus 25-35 to 35 big blind stacks, putting the pressure on them to shove, shove or fold uh, and put their tournament life on the line. And then, um, as I mentioned earlier, I said that I would talk about this. Look for players running down the clock, then folding. Um, they're most likely trying to coast into the money and you should try to put pressure on them uh, by raising their blinds um, and looking to, to steal, steal from them at any opportunity. Um, so let's just uh, recap on what we've we've gone through today. Um, the main uh, idea is that we should be aggressive uh, on the bubble. Uh, we should steal lots and re-steal lots when the opportunities present themselves. Um, and we can, should continue playing our regular game and taking uh, plus chip EV spots wherever we possibly can. Um, we, as a final point, uh, and I've put the, the two images there again, we shouldn't care too much about min caching. Uh, we're looking at every opportunity um, to build up a stack and um, take down the whole tournament and just to kind of um, make sure that it sort of goes in if we look at we compare the uh, two at the moment um, we make a little bit of money by coming 117th okay um, but we make a lot of money if we uh, push for push for first place now of course there are going to be times where we make aggressive moves and we bust out um, on the bubble um, but I can be pretty confident in saying that if you're um, doing it in plus chip EV spots, um, then over time you're going to build, be able to build yourself up a stack um, that gives you a, a really, really good chance of making the final table and actually taking uh, taking the tournament down. So, uh, this has been Gazelic for Grinderschool.com. As always, uh, feel free to leave some comments, send me some messages, um, contact me at Skype, um, Gazelic Poker on there. Um, and yeah, I look forward to, to hearing uh, some feedback, uh, receiving your feedback for this. Um, and until next time, um, enjoy playing at the tables. Take care, guys. See you later. Cheers. Bye.